In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to configure the cluster from the client so that you can connect to a REST API project that you'll be building in Visual Studio. So how do you install the Couchbase SDK? Well, you can go get it on GitHub. Or, if you want something easier than that, just go to NuGet. Browse NuGet for Couchbase Net Client and install from there. So the Customer360 application that you'll be building throughout these labs is organized around a couple of layers of APIs in ways that I expect probably make perfect sense to you. You're going to be building a controller layer to expose to REST API that will rely on the HTTP verbs get, post, put, and delete, as I'm sure you'd expect. Now, for mapping the incoming JSON to a corresponding data model, we rely on the functionality of ASP.NET's Web Application Framework, specifically the API controller class. Now, that, in turn, is going to rely on a repository that we'll build. Now, we're building it out here as a repository because, as again, I'm sure you would expect, you're going to want to expose data to more than just one API layer and use it in various ways. So here, we'll create a Couchbase repository class, which is going to use generics and pass in plain old C-sharp objects as needed from your model that are mapped by the API controller that we're deriving as our customer controller. We'll look a little bit closer at that as we go along, but we'll be exposing methods like create, update, delete, etc. because you can't really have a database API course without doing something with CRUD, right? So there we'll have our CRUD methods and our GET methods and such. That in turn is going to rely on the underlying Couchbase API, which is primarily exposed through the bucket interface. And we'll be looking at methods like insert, replace, upsert, remove, as well as generically typed get and query methods, again, to ensure that the mapping between JSON and our data model classes happens via API controller. The magic of Microsoft. It's some amazing things that they do. So, how will we go about building the REST API itself? Well, of course, there are many ways to do it, but as we said, we are going to rely on the API controller approach of the various approaches that you could take to this. So we'll build out an ASP.NET web application, and we'll have you build it out as a separate app from the solution that we provide you to look at it, if you just want to cheat your way through the course, so to speak. Just kidding. You'll do what you need to do to learn. But you're going to build an empty template project and just select Web API to configure the project with the API controller class without any unnecessary MVC cruft around it, unless of course you want to do it a different way. So where will you find the documentation? Well, it's all online. If you go to docs.couchbase.com, you'll get to our documentation archive. And from there, you'll find the .NET Developer Guide for 2.3 and from there, you can get the SDK reference itself for Couchbase Net Client 2.3.3. I'll make sure that you see these pages in a moment when we tour the lab a bit. So how do you configure a cluster connection for Couchbase? Well, it's all based around the client configuration class. You see the package underneath it there if you want to go out and look at it immediately. So the client configuration represents the configuration state for a given cluster. Now, the cluster uses this object to initialize its internal state, as we'll see in a moment. So we're going to use inline property declarations so that we have some easy-to-read configuration code here. But we're going to create a new config object from client configuration. And the server's property takes a list of URIs. Now, note, these are just the bootstrapping URIs. So they would be high-availability URIs for your app. Once the connection is made, the complete list of available nodes in the cluster will be available to the client, and that ends up being managed automatically in the back end. But these are your bootstrapping URIs. There's a number of other properties, as you would expect. For example, yes, you can encrypt over the wire with Couchbase. Of course you can. So you would configure here whether or not SSL is going to be used, and of course you'd want to have that arranged properly for the URIs. There's many other options as well. We're not going to sit here and read the documentation to you. We'll make sure you know where you can find it. But you'll see that there's a lot of additional options that might go into the configuration of a given cluster. Now, once you have that set up, 
then you need to think about the buckets. So within the config object, you can assign a bucket configs property, which is going to be a dictionary of name value pairs of individual bucket configuration objects. Obviously, this is how we identify within the config object the name of each bucket and then a group of settings for each bucket that's going to be available to this client. So we might have customer 360 with a config, travel sample with a config, whatever buckets need to be available to this particular client can be configured here. Now you can have name and password control at the bucket level as well. You could also have SSL at the bucket level as well. It depends on how you want to arrange the behavior between your particular client and the server. Of course, there's more options here as well. Lifespan intervals, timeouts, pool configuration, and so on. So how do you interact with a cluster once it's configured? That's all done through the cluster helper class that manages your interaction with a configured cluster. So for example, to initialize the connection itself, you pass the config option off to the initialize method of cluster helper, and that will set up the connection. So there will be methods available like get to return a singleton of the cluster through cluster helper where relevant, which means you could get to the configuration property of your cluster to get access back to the client configuration object at runtime. There's also a close method to dispose of the current cluster and clean up resources and such. And of course, numerous additional options. You get the drill, you can go to the documentation, get into the hairy details of all of this, but this gets you oriented and ready to do so. Now, in the lab here, you're going to create an API project, configure your cluster and your bucket references. Let's go and take a quick look at things here. So first off, just to be sure you know where to go, I'm going to go to docs.couchbase.com. That's going to take you over to our documentation archive. I'll scroll down to version 2.3 of the .NET Developer Guide. And Here's some very helpful basics for you and more information that you'll find that's generic to all of our SDKs. But if you scroll to the bottom, down here, you'll see, amongst other things, eh, there's a good Hello World example if you want to play with that. We'll go a little further than that in this course. But you can get a link to the SDK source code out on GitHub, and then right here you get a link to the SDK itself. You'll probably want to keep this open so that you can dig into it and answer questions for yourself and such as you work through the lab. Now in the code that you're going to build, first, this Customer360 project is available in the solution if you just want to jump in and see what the workbook is going to have you build. And if you just want to look at the code, fine, just browse the code. However, from a learning standpoint, we really encourage you to do as the book says. Create a new project, put in the code, play with it, Tweak it. Do the things that you would do with this code. Use it as a playground for you to get the new synaptic connections going in your head around this if you really want to put this technology to work. But you'll go about that the way that you want to. The point here is that you have a config object, which is where you'll configure connections to the local couch-based cluster that you set up in the first lab, and you'll define your bucket connections here. Now this is being done in a custom class you'll create couchbase config with a setup method and there's also a cleanup method which calls close for us. So where do you think you would call that in an ASP.NET app? Of course, global.asax. You'll call one of those in application start as well as your web API config. We'll look at that briefly and then application end you'll clean things up. Now web API config we don't play around with in this course too much because we assume that you can find your own answers around REST APIs and ASP.NET. But this is where it's defining the path pattern for the incoming connections. You could play with this if you want. There's great documentation for it available from Microsoft. But we are going to talk a little bit in the next lab about how this camel case property name contract resolver helps the Microsoft code ensure the discrepancies between your JSON attribute names map properly over to the spelling that you happen to use in your model in case things may change over time. Anyhow, that's outside of the scope of this course, but it's good to look at. So, jump into the lab, take 15 minutes to play around with the code a little bit, get things put together. Every lab is going to build on the prior lab, so you'll want to jump in now. And then when you're done, come on back and we're going to talk about data modeling in JSON and a little bit more 
about how data gets mapped by the API controller from JSON over to the model that you define. We'll see you soon.